Today is the second Sunday of Lent, Cycle B. Each of today's readings challenges us to trust God more and reminds us of the reward for our faith in Him. Abraham was a very wealthy man and had everything a man of his time would have wished to have had except a son with his wife Sarah. At 80 years old, God grants him a son in his old age. His son Isaac is the most precious person and thing in his life. God then asked Abraham to sacrifice that which he loved the most. As a father, Abraham must have had second thoughts about killing his own son. Why is God asking me to do this? A distraught, broken-hearted, but obedient Abraham leaves the servants at the bottom of the mountain, Mount Moriah, and begins to ascend it with a knife in one hand and a lighted torch in the other. Young Isaac, who's carrying the firewood, asks his father, where is the sacrifice? Holding back his emotions, he simply says, God will provide. Abraham could barely muster the strength to carry out God's will. Every muscle in his body and every thought in his head did not want to do what he had been asked to do. What would you have done if you were Abraham? Can you give up the precious thing or the most precious person who love to serve God? As Abraham was about to kill Isaac with the knife, God stopped him and showed him a ram that had been caught in a bush in a thicket. Because of his fidelity to God, Abraham was greatly blessed. We should always pray to ask God to never put us to the test. Most of us, if tested by God, will fail. God the Father will allow the sacrifice of His only beloved Son in order to save us. He did what He did not permit Abraham to do. The second reading reminds us of how much God loves us. If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his only son, but handed him over for us all. God loves us so much that he allowed his beloved son to die for us. Why do some of us believe that he's eager to condemn us for the smallest of mistakes? Some Catholics believe God is schizophrenic. What do I mean by this? They believe that although having paid such a large sum, large ransom to redeem us, God is willing to condemn us and cast us out of the sight for the smallest of sins. God loves us so much that nothing can separate us from His love for us. God does not stop loving us 
even when we sin. He is like a mother that continues to love her child even when he or she commits serious errors. She may not or does not condone his or her actions, but still loves him or her. This Lent, we need to know that no matter how seriously we have sinned, God still loves us. And if we repent and change our ways, we shall be welcomed back into his community, the church. In the Gospel, Jesus allows a few of his disciples to have a preview of his resurrection, including his glorified body, his glowing, transformed body. He did this because he wanted to tell them of his imminent death, which would be followed by his resurrection. In spite of this, they still did not understand what Jesus meant when he spoke of the resurrection. There is also an important message in, for us in this event. As Jesus was, being transformed a cloud of air. This was no ordinary cloud. It was the cloud called Shekinah, which means presence, which led the people of Israel by day as they wandered for many years in the desert. It was a symbol of the presence of Yahweh, God the Father. As Jesus is being transfigured, he tells us, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Jesus is not another philosopher. He is the Son of God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. We may choose to accept or reject the advice of certain philosophers. However, to recognize the teachings of Jesus is like ignoring the warning labels on your major appliances. We have, or we are no better in such cases like rebellious teenagers who refuse the advice of loving and wise parents. The advice of the Father is, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Are our lives in conformity with the teachings of Christ? 